like a very interesting talk about the integration or kind of the, the mashup between Wi-Fi sensing and ML. Um, and it's really, really interesting. So we're going to have Joseph Chue from um, National Tsinghua University come up and uh, give us a talk. Thank you so much. Hi, right, good afternoon, everybody. Obviously, I'm not this person. I'm Andrew President Him. So my name is Joseph Chu. Um, I represent my co-worker, um, Professor Tsai, from the University of Tsinghua um, here in Taiwan. Um, the topic today is actually more about the radio frequency um, sensing, which will be the next generation uh, CG and also Wi-Fi uh, standard feature. That is different from this morning's talk about more about the vision or the camera, but this is about radio frequency. OK. So my background, um, um, I educated in Sydney University, Australia. Um, for the last 25 years, I've been the research and also business development in semiconductors. Um, so we recently, our company um, actually uh, started for about three years. We recently been awarded for the Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Grand Challenge uh, because of the AI topic. Okay, talking about today, so we've, we'll go through these uh, um, radio frequency sensing uh, based on Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi every year is account about six billion um, units a year for the t um, total addressable market every year. Uh, increasingly, the AI was expecting the, the, the volume was like increased a double or triple. So this will be very significant uh, application user case for um, the tiny machine learning. Okay. So Wi-Fi sensing is actually a new technology that is using uh, existing radio frequencies based on, uh, for example, 2.4G, 5G, even up to 60 gigahertz for the radio frequency and sensing. So you, what it can be used is actually like human activity recognition, intruder detection, localization, that is um, be able to, to um, be very accurate, for example. In the past, the Wi-Fi, we know that for the 30 years, past 30 years, is based on signal processing from communication. Uh, so it cannot be very accurate. For example, we see that localization is probably uh, to several meters away. But with uh, machine learning, we are able to be close, narrow to 30 centimeters, so which is uh, usable for uh, robotics, uh, for um, ID, and also for like um, um, external will be drawn. Okay. Um, and this research is based on the uh, feature injection from the channel state information, which is called CSI, um, to collect the data and make some uh, judgment. And this is ra rather new, because nowadays, if you see the uh, chip supplier like MediaTek, uh, like uh, Broadcom, like Realtek, um, the, this kind of feature is there, but it's not optimized. So it's very difficult to apply um, the AI, especially the machine learning, into it, into the hardware. So we try to resolve this kind of a problem by providing the, um, the genetic platform so people can apply the algorithm into it. Okay. Um, consider the Wi-Fi uh, in the indoor. Nowadays, if you go to the U.S., you will see that already deployment uh, with AT&T and Verizon, for example. They already use a so-called Wi-Fi sensing, uh, but there's uh, some uh, problem of uh, the cost because it requires at least like um, three pairs, three three devices of uh, AP router. So that's the main cost um, because Huawei is super expensive on that part. Um, so we are trying to resolve the problem by reducing the configuration for the Huawei configuration. So in the future, everybody can put in the, their algorithm and develop the algorithm into the environment. Um, so CSI information, um, for those of you um, um, the first time to learn about this, is the channel state information is actually the information we use in the in channel. So uh, in the channel, we mainly will have uh, uh, several orders of uh, magnitude. So you can uh, extract the information from the data set. And from the data set, you can do the processing. 
Um, so we will go through this. Um, number one will be the magnitude. Magnitude is the one um, you can easily attract. Um, and the second one will be the uh, phase. However, phase is very important here because the, just like um, several antenna, you see that there must be a phase difference. So in order to do the um, algorithm um, and make correct decision, uh, we need to have this um, phase information to be as accurate as possible. And that's basically the limitation. So from this research, we've, we will actually uh, recommend to have more degrees of freedom. Uh, more degree of freedom and the, the channel and the receiver side, you will be able to make decision. OK, uh, consider the issue. So we improve the quality of the feature from the Wi-Fi sensing application. Um, and um, to have a more of a publication environment exam, and also the transmission bandwidth, how the bandwidth is going to affect uh, on the, the sample data you are going to take. OK, and the uh, uh, transmission model. So for those of you, uh, this is a, a two major transmission model um, in communication. We call OFDM, OFDMA. OFDMA is uh, applying Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7, but OFDM was before, before Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 4, and Wi-Fi um, 11 A, B, OK? And we also need to consider the uh, CSI data aggregation issue and the interference between other systems. Because that would be the major part if you apply to your algorithm into this kind of uh, detection. Then you have to consider all the interference from the air. Because this is not like the uh, vision. Uh, you can easily use camera to man manipulate um, the, the camera image. But the interference from the air, you cannot see. So you have to take this out into consideration. So number one, inference of uh, propagation in, uh, environment. OK. Um, the main takeaway is this one, because in, the, in China, you actually have multi-path. So you have uh, all the reflection of the signal. And this will induce the time dispersion into the, the received signal. So we need to consider the, the delay and uh, into the environment size. So in this kind of a, um, suggestion, we recommend three sub-cases, uh, small, uh, medium um, size of the room and the large medium, um, large size of room. And uh, we will exact through this simulation. Um, basically, we will go through like the bandwidth and how the bandwidth will going to affect our, uh, our data set. So this is one small size room uh, based on 20, giga, uh, 20 megahertz of the bandwidth. So if you can see um, from these two main things, um, CSI magnitude and the CSI phase, uh, the magnitude is almost a uh, flat, but the phase difference will be the something that you can only uh, pick out from this uh, data set. So this is another simulation that uh, the CSI phase is, uh, you see that this is generally nonlinear for the multi-pass channel. And uh, for the large room, uh, because you have more uh, freedom of, uh, of uh, propagation, so you will see both of the CSI magnitude and the CSI phase um, in, as an informative. So basically, nonlinear CSI phase is more informative for, for the, um, the decision making. And uh, we also talk about the inference on the transmission bandwidth. Um, so basically, uh, if you have a, a bigger or wider transmission bandwidth, you can actually improve the frequency selective. So that means you have more, um, okay, more um, data you can pick up from. Um, so in the following, we'll go through the simulation, quickly run through it. So this is um, for 40 and to 80 megahertz, which larger bandwidth. So you will see the magnitude and the phase difference. Okay, this is uh, for medium size room and large size of room, okay. So the inference on the transmission mode, this is um, one key takeaway as well. Uh, in Wi-Fi 4, you only have OFDM. In Wi-Fi 6 or above, you have more advanced of uh, uh, core OFDMA, including the, um, the subcarrier. More subcarrier means more sample space, means more freedom of, uh, of uh, degree of freedom to, to make decision. So we'll see that um, actually through the simulation, the OFDMA with more um, room of a subcarrier is actually better in performance. 
So this is quickly example of uh, um, what we do compared to FDM and OFDMA. Okay. So another thing is uh, aggregation. Um, nowadays, if you use, use a simply take away from, um, from Qualcomm for Broadcom or MediaTek uh, chipset, um, you will have uh, some difficulty to take out the, the um, example of a data set because all the data will actually, con um, actually collect. So you need to do the face coordination. This is su um, super important in order to have a clear data um, at um, the, the receiver side. So in the following, we'll do the field measurement. Okay, and we see a person in the room and a, without person in the room, what will be the, the sample? Okay, so we almost flat response for the magnitude um, and almost the same. So the only thing you can see here is the on, only the face different um, in these two. And the most important will be the um, other radio signal interference. So in this case, we take Bluetooth. So if you take Bluetooth, it's sharing the same frequency uh, response from Wi-Fi. Uh, you see the, uh, a lot of uh, interference as uh, a circle one here. So how do we re resolve this kind of problem? Um, we actually need to induce uh, more degrees of freedom into the sample space, which is mean the, uh, the radio frequency channel information. So either more channel or um, more phase coordination. Actually, if you can have a hardware solution which you introduce coding at the transmitter side, uh, which you decrease, uh, actually increase the degree of freedom by one order. For example, um, in the, in the Wi-Fi, we will increase from degree of freedom for two into three. So you can actually have more order in processing in the, um, the decision side. Okay, so the conclusion is that um, uh, based on the CSI uh, information, uh, we, can, we can actually do this um, kind of uh, uh, sensing and AI uh, decision making uh, in using the radio frequency um, system. Uh, for medium and large room size, uh, you actually have more degree of freedom because uh, you have more um, sample space. But for the small room, you actually need to have um, um, more processing power at the receiver side to make it more um, compatible. Okay, so basically that's the, the conclusion of uh, the um, new radio frequency uh, AI that's in application of Wi-Fi, and which will be the same for 6G as well. Any question? Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, fantastic. So we